Welcome back everyone to TNO, the GLF Prelude to Change demo campaign on the channel here, which we're playing as everyone's favorite Berezovich, Kruger, Kreiger, this guy, who's got some good facial hair. But we're connecting the strings here. Can't be right. While it's clear that now Lion's been undermining me and actively working to build his own sphere of influence, the strings all point to much something which suggests something so much bigger than just himself wishing to push me out of cover for a small accident. That can't be true, can it? Okay, ten more, point one more political power would be nice, but checking the walls. Lions has not been since so. No, in fact, he's been very active in placing agents and pushing the tempo of his little war of ours. If he thinks I'll let him get even better of his net, from which he can try to hide his movements and his plans again, then he'll truly never know who I am, what I've done, and how I did it. <clears throat> As we'll be tapping the lines, there'll be no secrets anymore. Now we're so close to figuring out what lines is hiding, and perhaps why he's done all of this. Lines will be tapped, digital communications will be tracked, and people follow them. There can't, won't be any surprises. Not now. And where are your loyalties, Lion? They give me no opposition. No offense, sitters. No Lion's active attempts to undermine my authority now in plain view. Commanders like staff and all of them must be on the company side, no other. Our future demands loyalty, discipline, unity. Nothing else, nothing more. Friend, now traitor. <coughs> all of this strife because of a man couldn't let go. It's come some sort of stick joke. Lions was behind it all, the, with conflict with Tomsk, all the corruption, all the problems. I knew it was trying to push me out, or at least make my people think we're somehow deserving to carve out our own chunk of a country we have no claim to. I could work against the undermining, and the obfuscation, but maybe you believe it was simply him trying to hide a small mistake or protect me. But this? Things he's done to both the company now and me? These cannot be forgiven. He's killed our people and actively tried to destroy the foundation which the company's been built. Also, we're doing all this stuff, but I did get to the point where I realized, oh, we can actually get technology. Oh, there's 1,400 available. So we're getting some uh, uh, independent combat protocols that have less manpower requirements, which would be nice. And collect on the staff. Now, I'd like to believe we can trust everyone within the company. I'm not a fool. We'll need a trusted staff to confront lines with. This will take time, but nothing can grow wrong now. If lines is given an inch, he'll take a mile, and every plan we've made will fall apart. Assemble in the case. It's not enough that we'll have to give everything, that we have everything to prove lines guilt. When you assembled in one understandable case document, both the presenter or command staff and general staff, Lions will no find spores inside the company ever again. Death in the wind. The moment has come. No more hiding, no more running, no more sudden visits. Lions will pay for what he's done. Justice will be served, of course. And the rot which you now clung to his company will be peeled away. More political power. Remove the foggy future and get murk with the state. More political power and civility for ten, uh, like, like half a year or something like that. Nice. What do we have over here? Uh, 75 days left, not bad. Ooh, we can raid. Black Civilian Army. Ooh, I kind of want to... These guys are a little different, though. They're already over here, so we're going to do this anyways. Right now. 101. We're still doing okay-ish. We can spend a little bit of money, but not really since we're doing the case, so... And now we're out of money. We're still 108. Not bad. So now, we got two days left. Can we beat the Shnikes out of them? We lost a little bit of things here. That's not good. Nope. Oh, all right. Less bloodshed, dust in the wind. Cleaning our wounds. Lions betrayal ran deeper than we thought, Commander. He still piercing together how exactly it was going to disrupt our operations in the name of his vision. However, as snow thaws, our warlord neighbors around us aren't giving us some of the time or space we need to recover from our own internal disputes. We're going to need to, tri to triage care around here, so to speak, or new focus. Now it needs to be putting on our neighbors in the graves. Well, not fixing the domestic situation. When we consolidate our grip on the Siberia a bit, I'm sure I'll have the time to get back around and actually making sure the locals stay fed and have roofs over their heads, but not right now. Now we have multiple gun barrels pointed directly at us. Yeah. Yeah, also we did do the whole thing over there earlier, and we're still researching stuff, which is good. Trust in the boss. Kruger, no, uh, Griffin and Kruger, have gone through a lot, but never been, we've been on the brink of civil war. Despite the current situation calling for solidarity, uh, Lion's greed and ego truly knows no bounds, and the rat was a good orator as he was a plotter. Sometimes there are still critical members within our teams that do not have full faith in our vision for Siberia. Commander, we should organize a march and inspect the troops. It'll do one for optics and also give us a chance to talk to some of the people who are disillusioned with their current goals and methods. Hopefully they can be convinced to see reason we can't really afford to keep purging so many of our own. Knock knock. <coughs> the door was kicked open. With such force that it flew off its hinges and slammed into the ground, kicking up dust as it landed. With practice ease, M4A1, Soft Mod 2, Star 15, RO, and M16A1 cleared the room. Checking every corner, keeping a close eye while looking for signs of a trap, some sort of ID, anything. What they found said was nothing. The office was empty, every personal effect removed, and the only thing remaining was a thin layer of dust covering the desk in the middle of the room. A second later, Kruger walked in. Stepping over the door, giving the office a once over, his eyes trailing over every detail. Kruger's frown, crossing his arms. He turned to M4A1. Nothing? M4A1 gave the room one more check and turned to him, giving him a sharp knob. Nothing. Kruger sighed, walking past AR team to the desk, tracing his finger along the top of it, leaving a visible trail behind it on its dust-covered surface. Lions was long gone. 
Cuckoo's frown deepened. Turning around, he looked back at AR team. Got the combat engineer to check the uh, floors, walls, all of it. I want this room checked top to bottom for anything. AR squad gave him a crisp swoop before quickly exiting the room, leaving Kruger behind. He turned back and found uh, stared blankly at the desk, thinking of a better town before shaking his head and quickly leaving. Kruger won the war, but, uh, but at what cost? But at what cost, my friends? But happy June now. I'll do some comments to go through, but we'll get to them in just a little bit. Uh, but how much how much damage do we actually do to the Siberian Black Army? Obviously, no manpower. Oh, it's time for everyone to kill each other. Where are we at for this? It's still going up. Oh, inflation is still going up too. Not ideal. Uh, I wish we could focus on this more, but you know, there's not much we can really do. Our divisions do really quite well. Uh, are you okay? So that's actually not high enough. Well, cleaning your wounds. Ah, yeah, you're okay now. What is this? We have more than 8% of military supplies in smooth up. Gives an ability to select expansion decisions in case they're available. Office politics. There will be order. Ah. The Russian anarchy, as some locals have been calling it, seems ready to kick off into high gear. While well, equipment stores claim to have enough guns and ammo for us to fight on multiple fronts, coordinating where they need to go in a multi-front war is a whole other problem. As much as Kalina suffered already getting us up and on our feet, she's the best officer in making sure every team in the field has their rations or ammo and equipment. Someone please get our adjutant another cup, nay, another pot of coffee. She's going to need it over the next couple months. If our teams are as good as they were back in the world, hopefully it'll only be a couple of weeks. So we have this thing here. So we have eight containers, half chaos, supplies are a bit high, and it's only going to go down. Which would be nice. More war support, division attack speed, emergency measures, cruise cap, attack Tomsk, but Siberian Black Army. I can't do this one. Attack will be launched to occupy forces of warlord that will get to know about the threats through our resources. And we're preparing to attack on them while preparing to attack on us. We'll get the general bonuses said and vice versa. So these guys are attacking each other. These guys are attacking each other. Honestly, Tomsk would probably be the best. Because they they could be very problematic if we don't do them. So 15 days, that's more than enough time for us to like start blitzing through their territory, hopefully. Manufacturing, 49 days, loot. <sighs> Just don't have the wherewithal to do that for now. Let's go and get there faster. Hopefully we can get a race to Tomsk. These guys get beaten back. That'd be ideal, but... Yeah. Let's have to wait and see. Trust in the boss. Look <clears> the <throat> manpower. Political power gain, that's pretty good. Breakthrough attack. Division 40% more division speed, that's kind of insane. Can we do without it though? Change by plus 5 becoming plus 8. Uh... As we push further and further away from previous boards, our logistics situation goes ever more tenuous. What an already was an exhaust and desperately understaffed division of our state has been pushed to the absolute brink. Additional supply bases and rails connecting to them need to be constructed if we are to keep up with the pace of our progress our combat teams have been making. We've also been told that some of the locals have come up with patriotic names to hopefully inspire more, a little more confidence in both the logistics staff but the troops as well. Help the editor's learning. Actually, they're definitely not perfect. Cycle reuse and resupply. <coughs> Despite the backward status of the Russian people and their scattered governments that exist in this world for far longer than we have, as sophisticated as their tech is, there's still plenty that we can learn from both the production methods, but also how they've managed to maximize what they get from the land. We'll instruct our combat teams to minimize their assaults on production population centers in the hopes of recovering both equipment and specialists who know just how to make the most of the equipment. Just think of it as a new employment, Commander. We certainly do need the warm bodies around here. More coffee, please? 
When we, were, when we were whisked away to this world's rush, a lot of good administrative and logistics staff didn't make it here with us. We have no idea they're in our world, beyond confused all beyond heck or worse. But as time kept going and our existing staff kept working sleepless nights, we began to find replacements for our previous staff. And commanders, it's hard to deny that both their civilian government and our armed forces seem to be operating with a newfound efficiency. As we do have to work more and more in tandem with each other, soon Griffin and Kruger will become whole again. We'll be able to expand horizons just beyond Siberia. You know what? Let's continue with the effort. No, I just want to know. Those, those guys. Nice. There we go. We got him. Come a robo, huh? Where's the uh, Tom's all sorts with the cores and the Tom's of these cores and gone and ours installed. Forty. We lose a little bit of civilian chaos, get more, slightly more GDP growth, and selected. Yes, please. Ural Military District, huh? I know supplies are very bad over there, so we're not going to do that one for now. So GDP is now 55%, so I feel okay doing something like this, as well as equipment. Or maybe we should attack him anyways. Screw it. Happy August. More civilian chaos. We're going to reduce civilian chaos, I guess. More sport. Oh, that's, we'll give it this one. Nice. So you should save a tiny bit of manpower. Uh, what is this one? Manpower crowns go even further down. Experimental losses. Defense. Soft attack, hard attack, that's good. Nice. Should stop us out quite a bit little more. Yes, production methods are good too. Let's get over there. Ah. And oh, they paid the tribute. Okay. Their choice. Nice. So they're killing each other they're over there. Probably just go to war with these guys then, Nova Sibirsk. <coughs> Look at their time. Hopefully. Office uh, politics. With Lionstone's disappearance, all his assets began to realize that their positions were not as secure as they once thought. Well, before we couldn't do much of a due to the protection the Lions provided, with Lions no longer there to protect them, many would be encouraged to leave. Forced believe need to be. And on the other hand, there are plenty of dolls, commanders, and personnel stuck by Kroger through these trying times. Uh, rewarding them and simply reminding them that the oaths would be enough to enough things to push forward into a new unsure future. Let's do some office politics, shall we? Terminate contracts. Smart as one of our as our commanders may be, the betrayals of everything that is core Griffin and Gruger's identity cannot be ignored. A painful loss to be sure, but we are, can't constantly have to look behind ourselves to see if the second daggers are coming for us. We determine the contracts of any and all commanders that are working alongside lines and bring forward a perverted vision onto our state. Hurt them ouch. Hurt them, hurt them ouch. There you go. In all honesty, let's see. Do we even really need Artie? Yeah, I mean, it's good to have. No, I don't know what was going on because it wasn't going. That Blackhawk, huh? Nice. 
nice. Um, Remember your oaths. Every commander that's joined Griffin and Kruger uh, has made an oath before to devote their lives in the service of the company. Just because we dumped it into another world doesn't give them any of the right to renege on that uh, agreement. Right now, the company is beset by its enemies on all sides, and right now we need every able bodied commander to take up arms and fight like their lives are on the line. The company may very well perish if they don't. The rewards for almost everybody. The daily lit office will occupy the activity with company commanders doing specific tasks, paperwork, planning strategies, chit chatting, many more. Well, everyone's focused. The atmosphere will soon change as doors open and Kruger steps inside the office. Everyone in the office will stop their tasks simultaneously, stand up, and salute back to Kruger. He nodded his back and signaled them to be at ease, and cleared his throat and spoke in a manner of business with a serious tone. Everyone, I'd like to thank you all for sticking by my side during Lion's conspiracies. Celebrate this moment as Kruger was talking, noticed one commander slowly turning around behind their back, and left the office in silence. He ignored the commander and then turned back to the other staff and continued his speech. I'd like to all share a drink with me. Uh, the. Helianthus would enter the office at the same time, pushing a car with a bottle of alcohol and shot glasses on top. It's a bottle from 2022 Tennessee whiskey I stated for a while, but no time seems better than the present to share a glass amongst good company. This company's a family, one that's struggling to find its purpose in this world and has faced many hardships. However, there are those rare few like you who remember my, why they were selected, why I offered a contract, and who remember the oath they took upon joining. Kruger ended his short talk and would then reach for the bottle of whiskey, opening it and then pouring the brown liquid onto the shot glasses. Sam so Farnham would then form a line, grabbing a shot after one another. Once everyone had their shot glasses, Kruger Helanthus and the company staff raised glasses high and said, Devai in a tone of celebration. You an idea about the commander about the commander for later. Hey, you're getting over some beers. Nice. What? What? Bruh. I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. Clean slate. <clears throat> Say, the last 12 months have been an utter mess, but been an understatement. Interval, interval uh, upheavals followed by immediate betrayal by one of our closest friends since establishment in the company who has sent almost made a sanatorium. But now that Berzovich, Kruger, though, and with most of the distractions silent the company limited and the ever growing number of dolls being produced, it's time for Griffin and Kruger to get back to what we do best open warfare. And now, everyone, it's time for us to beat up uh, the principality of Kemerovo because they were being a bunch of duty heads to us, taking away stuff that we'd honestly deserved. And, uh, you know what, we're gonna not attack here. Go and relax real quick. Let them get attacked here, and we should be fine defending here. Kimberova just needs to die and burn. That's BS that we didn't get all this territory from earlier, but that's why we're attacking them now. And we have our other divisions moving around, helping us out. Uh, we probably want to start making at least another division here somehow. Uh, we'll cut some, like I said, some cons go through as well, and we'll get more, uh, more of that. That'd be pretty nice. Remember your oaths. And we read uh, Clean Slate earlier, so if you really want to read that again, please go ahead. But what else do we have after that? To those that do exist. And let's squad 404 to aid us in the Smuta, unlocking new decisions of the GUI. Let's go this one. Those that do exist. One of the greatest <clears throat> strengths of our T to all platforms is their absolute loyalty to a T. Unfortunately, this also means that they're incapable of doing literally anything without direct orders from a commander. There are, of course, exceptions to that rule, consisting of the UMP sisters, HK416 and the ever sleepy G11, squad 404 are capable of acting on their own, having served dutifully as G and K's Black Ops team. So it doesn't make them popular with other dolls or even among some commanders, but we need to throw need them more now than ever before. These pathetic warlords about to have no idea what's who's sabotaging their communications and supply lines. Are you headed to Nova Spears? You're headed to Nova Spears. I want you to actually help, help out here too. Blow up everything they got. We got Nova Spears, and we're going in crashing through here too. Barnal. Is get them? Actually, you're right there. Ooh, this might not be enough. Come on. I mean, they stole this stuff from us earlier, so, like, this is not fair to us at all. Oh, there goes that one guy. Are they here? Um, not too much. No, we're, we're actually struggling quite a bit right now. Those that do exist, you know what? We're gonna cast from spreading. Get more attack. Lorraine in Siberia. Despite the sordid conditions our neighbors have existed for decades, you can bet your butt that they've got some kind of ace up their sleeve. Some kind of tool or plan that will let them think they'll win this whole scrum. Yeah. 
Thankfully, so do we. The anti rain team, for better or worse, has been transported to this pass rush alongside us. M4, SOP Mod 2, M16, AR15, and RO635 have all been awaiting orders, Commander. And given the current situation, I think we know exactly where to deploy them to maximize the chances of winning this conflict. As saying goes, when it rains, it pours. Also, we are doing the technology here now, and getting more soft attack and whatnot. Um, what is our economy like? We are more than good right now. We're going to purchase more dolls. Uh, purchase. Yay. Second generation, third generation frames. Um, Legacy of Siberian Plan. We can't really do too much of that right now. Warlord Development, of course. And we'll go with agricultural stuff. Central Siberia, not quite. Anything up here that we really want to use? Weekly manpower. Ooh, that's a lot of manpower for us. You know what? I I'll, go, I'll spend it a little bit. I'll spend it just a little bit, because we can probably use more weekly manpower and whatnot. They are just all bunching up here. Like, my god. I'd like to go here and encircle them, but can't quite do that yet. Let them move up here, and then we can take them out here. If we can take out Barnall, that'd be great. You guys just keep them in place for now. Can you guys hurry up and get over there, maybe? Yes, no, maybe so. Maybe attack there, too. Yes. But, oh, and the game's lagging because of the German Civil War. But, couple comments. So, someone says, So, girls' front lines now coming to Hoi 4. Now, this is interesting. Can't wait to see how this played out in the mod, of course. Never would expect this, but really. Girls' uh, front line is a great story. So, seeing this played out on Hoi 4 TNO is a welcome treat for us. Someone says, Do a world conquest with them. Well, can't quite do that. Someone says, As one of the devs uh, left to comment, the guy with the bush profile picture, huh? Thanks for playing the model, expecting and promising more features, so if you're interested, keep watching, and I'll be dropping more fire. Oh, I hope so. This is very interesting. I like this a lot. Someone says, my history is going to clear after this. And then someone else says, this is quite unexpected. You know, I was recommended to play this mod, and you know what? Obviously, I did. Why is it going up and down all the time? Oh, come on. We were so freaking close. There you go. How is that not enough to capitulate them, bro? Like, for real. <clears throat> Actually, we could go here, too. Where's the capital? Good. We lost the base. Wait, what? How do we lose the basin? What? Bruh. Go and kill these divisions off real quick. Um, the Reign of Siberia followed up with what? To find the odds. Unfortunately for us, barbarians are at the gates of Rome, and we need a lot more than just two squads of tea dolls to keep them out. Made up of uh, some of the best tea dolls of the generation, Angelia. This is a police report that the team defies reported for duty. Led by AK-12, AN-94, RPK-16, and AK-15, these four are more than ready to fight for Griffin and Kroger. Kroger? Kruger. Team Defy have been compared to nothing less than a pack of blood worth thirsty wolves. Now the attack they're going up against the neighboring warlords and their sorry troops are nothing more than lambs being led to the slaughter. So what do we have for those other op options now? Commit to the war effort. Mm, civilian chaos does go up. Deploy Team 404, despite their questionable loyalties in their own role. are more or less stuck with us here. Oh, they'll be ex uh, expecting payback once we've won, but skills as a black ops and wet work team are invaluable. Op 4s will have a hard time commanding the troops if their officers are dead, after all. Prevent chaos from spreading? Oh, sure, we'll try it. Why not? Move the war closer. There's attack and speed. Don't tell me they're moving down here. Oh, they're just attacking us. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to war with them. Alright, so they're attacking us here too. That's not good. Come on, bro. You are there, you can circle all these divisions too. Developments. Um, what else? Need more technology. Scan for loop? Sure, why not? Honestly, if we don't win this war, I'm just going to use comms commands at this point and just like give us. We should have Nova Spears at least under us. We're the ones who did all that stuff, so. They should definitely be under us. What is this? There will be order? <clears throat> Just because we've been around the, for the shortest time in Central Siberia it doesn't mean we're the wackiest bunch of part of Russia. You're seriously telling me that the locals would rather fight and die for some random Soviet general who's so far off his pills that he believes that he's a rightful Tsar of Russia over us? 
There's no doubt in the progress we made on the military front. We need to now actually convince people in our conquered lands that we're not here to harvest our organs or work with them to death in a factory. We want a stable state as much as they do, and it's up to us, Commander, to work with the locals to give everyone to calm down as much as possible. Kill yourself over here. What? No, I want you... Oh my god, stop it. You're here. Rid of the war effort. Speed. Render limit. Oh. How do we get defeated? Camarovo needs a nerf. It really needs a nerf. How did you lose over here and then get over there? What the heck? I don't understand. Honestly, if they if they win, I'm I'm taking the territory. No. Uh, I'm taking the territory. I'll be right back as we are going to make sure that we get the territory because we've been gypped twice already. Occupation. Cease and desist from damage to company property. 100 cheeky spoken in the megaphone. Uh, what's the liner? Griffin and Kruger has a customer service line. Should you wish to file a complaint, please? The crowd paid 100 cheeky no heat. They simply continue their assault on the Griffin truck, slashing the tires, breaking equipment against the road, and carrying off the cargo to places unknown. None of them had actually attacked 100 cheeky yet. Their namesake weapon kept them at bay, but some of the shots th looks thrown her way made her nervous. A screech of the tires accompanied the arrival of Griffin Humvee skidding to a halt on the city streets. A doll stepped out carrying a great war machine gun. Uh, and a bad attitude. Looks like a bunch of a-holes are making a life difficult, snarled PM 1910. Why don't you just shoot them? What? No, said 100 cheeky aghast. We're not authorized to shoot non combatants Also, that's horrible. Fine, I'll take care of this for you. Watch. And PM 1910 raised a weapon, fired over the heads of the crowd. The shots turned to screams. One ran, another, another, and another, until almost all had stamped away. Uh, or stampeded away. A few stubbornly remained, glowering at the dolls. Uh, PM 1910 met the glares of their own and tapped a weapon. They walked away a few making crude gestures at the dolls. What the was that anyway? You're supposed to guard the truck, not just drive it. Sorry, 100 sh Shinky stumbled or mumbled, looking at the ground, but, but how can you do that? PM 1910 snorts, I've been taking crap from humans all my life. Now I'll get the chance to give some back. And we're going to go to war with these guys. I, I, I got tired of this. And, you know, TNO, sometimes it's just a, lunch, a lot of BS, especially in the Warlord era. And I just don't want to deal with it. Uh, I still need to defy the odds as we read earlier, but... We're getting through it. Um, and, of course, uh, Germans of War has caused all sorts of stuff, which the Germans of War out here is getting reworked eventually, so... Karmatic, karmic Retribution. When uh, Tolia told himself he'd be doing horrible things to survive, he learned to swallow the hard truth that there was no heaven for him. He learned that the hard way was after being forced to kill a woman. His partner, Zell, seemed left sweeter than Tolia. I heard that from some new contenders arrived, which means more loot for us boys, his group uh, leader bellowed. Tolia felt sick here in the sadistic glee present and so-called comrades. The voice and tones made him mad. I heard they have some of the hottest women in all the effing Siberia. One chuckled and rubbed their hands. Though I was more compass or coiled, I can't wait to get my hands on him. I haven't had fun in years. It felt like lashing out, but with an empty stomach and a broken gun, what else could he do? Still, if only God could get him out of this mess. The growing sound of helicopters rolling drew his attention as he stared at the sky in horror. While he could, he ran and hid behind a, a log while the rest were dazed. The sound of machine guns roared around, validated his choice as his partners found themselves meeting the ground. The helicopters passed by, driving the passengers, and flew away as for Tolia, he contemplated surrendering. Maybe I. It'd leave him alive. If it wasn't worth getting shot by superior enemies, he shouted, I surrender. Ye. Yeah. So. We got five days left for these guys, and I, I just gave up on trying to, uh, you know, do this. Are these guys at war? Oh, they are at war. Well, god dang it, we're gonna get cocked by another group here, huh? There we go. Honestly, can we go to war with them too? No, we cannot. Hey, we got the weapon research done. Yeah, I don't know. We just don't have enough of anything here to really make ourselves strong. Like, it takes so much just to like make a single attack helicopter. And you need guns. At this point, I'm going to stop making guns because we need more military factors on other things. So... God, I hate how laggy Tino really gets. In the end. Um, those that do exist, of course. Disillusion. Come on. Oh my god. The game lags so hard. Jesus Christ. Uh, Tino. Why Tino? Why? Quickly manpower? No, well, we got a good amount now. More political power? Sure, why not? You know, let's get the speed. I want the speed this time just so that we can get through it faster. Play AR teams. We don't really need that. Division attack? That'd be nice, but. 
The boss and Persica have both agreed that the deployment of the AR team will be critical in these tr uh, trying times, specializing in asymmetrical warfare. If we were to deploy AR teams at specific hard points along the fronts, uh, we would have uh, could draw enemy attention away from our larger forces and dev devastate morale. 404. Yep, we were the one earlier. And defy the odds. Rain of the locals, huh? <coughs> uh, we're pretty good. Humans are cheaper. Spawn two human infantry divisions. Dolls in demand. I like that one more. The truth about this conflict is that it is painfully exposed how dependent we are on T-Dolls to push our enemies back. Locals here just don't give a rat's butt about fighting for some random people that have been seemingly come out of nowhere. And for some reason, when we incorporate officers into our human auxiliary units, they all kick and scream about commissars and tyranny. It seems as if the service is just as much a pain in the butt in the Russia as they were in ours. Regardless, Commander, I'll be paying a visit to the Persica in 16 Labs to see if we can improve T-Doll production. We need more field operatives ASAP. We need more production of everything. Go, 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 go. You're not going fast enough. I literally increase your speed by more so we can get them going faster. Uh, the junction's nice. Chaos, we're doing fine. Poor victories, I mean. But still. Oh, we need this one. Second frame. Weather. Yeah, that's okay. Initiative. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Xander Link Extensions. This one too. Workers. Nice. Stop doing this group. I don't know why you're doing it. It's not a sub mod thing, it's just a TNO thing. What do you want to lag about now? Seriously. It's only Muscovine. It's only 50,000 different units. Oh, or the country's exploding. Dolls in demand. Rain of the locals. The amount of ideologies in this 100, 800 kilometer stretch of Russia is astounding. We've gone from slums inspired by the Renaissance to a little anarchism with every other whack job ideology represented by some madman, probably also President of Siberia. Needs to say it ain't acceptable in our current state. <clears throat> Controlling the civilian population involves one of two things. Either keep them fed and clothed so much that they won't have to reason to complain, or to keep everyone inside their homes so they can't plot against you. And unfortunately for us, the MRE stockpile is barely enough to feed the dolls. Time to check in with the locals. Screw you, People's Revolutionary Council. Dolls in demand. I like them dolls. Commander Oversight. Graven and Kruger used to run out of one of the central operating base with several field depots meant to act as a forward operating bases or small scale communications posts. We're now facing the possibility of ruling over nearly a quarter of Russia. The scale is, uh, scale -up is an astronomically, astronomically large task. We're going to have to try our absolute best to figure out this out, and we're going to start with our commanders. These men and women are absolute logistics and combat wizards, and having them administer various districts of our state will be critical to keeping it stable. Here's hoping they can look as good in a suit as they do in military uniforms. Nice. And there are only 12 combos, which we can probably work on getting better. Line artillery, we don't really have any of that, so it's fine. Sapoli gives us more organization, but I don't know if we've really seen that. Do we need more T-Dolls at all? First gen frames? Yeah, we do. Uh... There you go. Wow. Almost, almost literally just completely destroyed. Is that better? Yeah. Or just one more thing of them. Fine. Bro, what are y'all doing? <coughs> Local authority, company control. 
You're only as strong as your weakest link, and while Griffin and Kruger are made out of vow to forge steel, we really can't say the same about locals. That being said, our, as we continue to observe refugees and defectors from other warlords, we found that some of them used to work under the administrative umbrella for the previous states. The men and women will be put to work immediately administering a new state. The experience is invaluable, especially given our lack of it. Rather than recruit them, we can increase uh, this if we really wanted to. We don't have to, though. I don't want to lose stability. Company benefits. Mayor Victor once thought he would live a simple life. When he, lamented, when he was a young man, working the earth helped feed his family, he lamented this fact. Wish more than anything that life would become more interesting, filled with more adventure. That had been many years ago. When he saw his world change, no longer did he wish for a more interesting life. In fact, he watched the black helicopters fly over a small town. He wished he could have reprimanded his younger self. One of the black helicopters landed, and a man dressed in a maroon trench coat and beret stepped out. He walked up to the purpose of Victor and gave a quick wave, trying his best to look as non-threatening as possible. Somehow they only made more uh, nervous towards Victor. Or he felt more nervous. Stopping in front of the Victor, the man, the, the other man went into a parade rest. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Commander Anderson, representing Griffin and Kruger here in the neighborhood. Would you happen to be able to lead me to your town's representative or leader? The man asked in thickly accented Russian. If Victor couldn't exactly place the accent, maybe American? Victor had to crane his neck up to look at the man. He felt so very small in comparison to him, as if the man in front of him was a giant. That'd be me, Commander Anderson. I'm the mayor of this humble town. What do you want? The commander tugged, uh, his face is tugged into a practical smile, and he offers a sample for a handshake. He, to hopefully work with you and offer protection for you and your family and people in exchange for some of the control of your area. Victor tentatively accepted the commander's hand, unsure what the future may hold. Out of touch, out of time. Commander, we've done it. No one has a gosh darn clue how, but we've united every single warlord state under a flag, Griffin and Kruger. Despite everything else, uh, Kruger, yeah, has a now regional power and controls vast land and wealth of Sub central Siberia. The question is, now what the heck are we going to do with it? Good question. As it lags, you get to February. All right. There you go. Attack and occupy. So just straight up blitz through everybody here. Can Robo needs a nerve. I say that, and I say that every single time. Uh, odds, feeling of safety. Maybe Victor had seen a lot in his lifetime. It was, well, he was old enough to remember that when the Soviets controlled Moscow. He'd been around here about the retreat to the east, how he'd seen the emergence of the Central Soviet Republic, and had been right there as a fell. The town had lived through it all, and it survived through it all. A common fact among it all, how little affected his town, his people. Each administration would come in and tell him his town was now their town and not along. He paid their taxes, yet he knew he'd never see the benefits of doing so. He was just how life was. When his new power, these strange people came in from above helicopters, above in helicopters, armed weapons and uniforms strange to him, and had offered to protect his people all in exchange for some control, he'd begun talks post-haste and seen to be veiled threats in his lifetime. This time, however, there was a noticeable difference in treatment and in attention if care if he was honest. In care if he was honest. The commander that had been assigned to the town often talked to him, asked what he needed, and asked him for help. It had been strange at first, something he wasn't used to, but he had slowly gotten used to it. The results? Roads have been fixed, were amazingly paved. Their promises of regular food deliveries, and these strangers actively fought off the ever present bandit issue that had been plaguing his town since the fall of the Republic. People in his town felt safe enough to live life, to thrive even, instead of just surviving like before. It almost seemed like the commander actually cared. He wasn't sure how long his Griffin and Cougar would be around, though. We certainly miss them when they were gone, too. Ah, oh, people are going to miss us? Most people don't care. Uh, point seven. The GP ratio. Well, we could attempt tax hike, but we're good. Uh, how many dolls are we missing? 82? It's good to keep an eye on that. There you go. Nice. Arosia. Two contenders. <coughs> and max out supplies. I want you to force it. I want you to double force it. Can you double force it? Certainly are taking their time. There you go. Now, oh, Marita. That's cool. All right, what's next? And we're going to control this too. Be very good. Happy March, everybody. Oh, is that it? No, that can't be it. No, that can't be it. I actually really like this and what the direction of the, where this mod is going. 
this looks really like a lot of fun. Griffin and Kruger sounds like it's just it's a lot of fun. Even though I did struggle earlier with the TNO stuff and the unification stuff, but that's not the mod's fault. The sub mod's fault. That's just TNO in general being stupid sometimes, and it happens. Um, but uh, yeah, I am really looking forward to this when the actual full mod comes out. So and to the dads who are watching, wow, Spirit's doing very very well. Holy crap! Um, it's the first time I've actually seen Spirit do very well. Did are these guys? What is going on here? Why do they take so much of Germania? That makes literally no sense to me, and these guys are actually a different color, huh? And regardless, um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend checking out this mod if you've not checked it out yourself. This is a lot of fun, so um, thank you to the devs who've worked on this, and uh, I look forward to seeing what else is in store for the future. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. I'll see you uh, in whatever other campaign we can get ourselves locked into. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.